It's been a while since the last art toasting episode, so let's fix that. In this episode, most people were looking for lighting related advice. So that will be the theme of the episode. Let's get into it. Trying to use lighting to make characters look less flat. I think it still looks a bit flat and blank. Toast away. I think the pose and such is uh, working well. I actually enjoy the low poly look to it. The shapes he's made of are quite angular and blocky, so we'd want the shading to reflect that as well. So my main goal is to basically sharpen the shading and give it these sort of steps instead of using a soft brush or blending it out too much. I don't know what happened there in the chest area it seems like you're tempted to make this little element here glow but it blends together with the rest of the lighting so i'll add this glow back later but for the time being i'll just render out the rest of this area i'm grabbing a little bit of the background tone here on the top facing planes to give it more dimension but keep in mind, it has to be lower brightness than areas that are actually getting hit with the main light. The main light source you added seems to come from the side, so I'm adding a shadow of the arm here on the torso to add more consistency. Plus, darkening planes that are facing more downwards because he's actually leaning forward a bit, which means that this is downwards. I'm now rendering out the rest of the character using basically the same logic just overall. One correction that is unrelated to the rendering was the perspective on this gun. The tip of the barrel was facing away from the camera so I just corrected the angle here. On the sides of his arms I added a bit of brighter color to imply reflection because he seems to be made of metal and after that it's basically just about cleaning up what I already had added. And last thing I did was darken the background a little and adding more tonal differences to imply long distance between the foreground and the horizon. So yay! Uh... Only the first one is finished, but in all of them it's pretty noticeable that I struggle with shading. All right, all right, all right. What pops out to me here is how clean the line art is versus how rough the shading is. Judging by the shadow going on the side of the character, we can tell that the light is coming from the opposite side. So first, I will define this with more clear light to dark transition. In the process, I'll also make the image a bit less reliant on the line art, specifically in the face, by defining plane changes with color instead of a line. I thought it was still a bit too low contrast overall, so I added more brightness to the light facing side of her and rendered out some clothing folds on top of that. So now we have a clear distinction between the key light and the shadow. And adding some sharper drop shadow parts helped clarify this even more. From this point on, I just rendered out some smaller areas areas and cleaned it up overall and finally added some of the line work back but only to define separation between different elements and not to define smaller plane changes like clothing folds and face details which kind of just balances the whole thing out a bit more. I struggle a lot with composition and background. Honestly, would appreciate any help and advice. Lol. Funny frog fighting with the wrench or about to hit somebody ass. Bonk moment. There's not a lot I'm gonna change on this one, but I do think that the framing is the biggest drawback here. This pose conveys movement and intense action, so I feel like we don't want to squeeze it in a tight frame like this. I also tweaked the gesture a bit to increase this C shape throughout the figure just a tiny bit more. As far as the background, I wasn't going to invent anything here, so uh, instead I just used this burst tool to add fake perspective and motion to it. As far as painting over the character, I just wanted to tweak the torso a bit. Mainly the shoulder area, which made little sense before. So I used the reference of uh, <laughs> armpits to paint this area properly. I also took some creative liberties with the rest of the torso and gave him like a bubble gut or that sort of situation. A little bit more miscellaneous rendering and we're basically done here. I 
I never got around to finishing this because at the time I was just figuring out the backgrounds and the character shading is super rough in some parts if you zoom in. So I do enjoy the character design here, but it's kind of hard to tell what's going on with how strong the shading is. I do like when the shading is well defined, but here it's taken too far. To the point where it's hard to tell what the actual color of the uniform is. I'm just gonna work on it assuming that it's white. So first I'll just bring the maximum darkness level of the suit shading up a notch. If it would go all the way to black, it would mean that there's no other light whatsoever in the scene, but she is under a bright yellow sky. So what we can do instead is add some yellow tone here to the shadow areas. I'm assuming that the material is somewhat reflective at least, so the yellow tone will be extra strong in areas where the forms are starting to turn away, such as the side of the torso and the underside of the boob. Now I took a little break and when I came back the whole image still seemed a bit too dark overall so I added a brightness adjustment. After cleaning it up some more I got to the hair. It was kind of lacking shadow definition so I made the left side be entirely in shadow using a darker tone. The up facing areas inside the shadow were lightened with a more desaturated yellow tone but I tried still keeping it lower brightness than the actual light area. I did some more cleaning up and then got to this cape looking thing. I thought it would complement the gesture and silhouette more if it had like this concave curve to it. So that's what I changed about it and it kind of worked so that's cool. I thought there still wasn't enough yellow in the shadows though so I added a quick overlay layer here and painted some orange over the shadows as a rough solution. Then I roughly rendered out the fur edges of the cape and did some more cleaning up across the whole image. And lastly, I changed the sky color to be a bit more of a saturated tone. So yeah, that's about it. Only thing I've done recently I can think of giving as an example, I think it's all right. This one just feels kind of unfinished to me, so I'll start out by adding more strength to the lighting here. On the legs, I'm using long directional strokes for a cleaner look. Previously, we could see a bunch of messy brush strokes that weren't really doing you any favors here. I'm thinking of two light sources. Firstly, the ambient kind of top lighting, which makes the leg that's going backwards be darker at the bottom and a purple-ish uh, side light hitting the sides of the legs. When I was more or less satisfied with the main forms, I rendered some small folds on top of it near the knees and the crotch area. So when rendering tight clothing, mo most prominent folds will appear close to joints or just parts where there's twisting and turning. There's this transparent fabric, but it's kind of just a sheet with no folds or anything on it. So the way I'd go about rendering that would be a new layer on hard light mode, which darkens and lightens what's underneath, depending on the color you're using. So I'm using a soft round brush and a one edge brush to quickly paint in some folds for some quick results. I felt like it was a bit too transparent though. So uh, I filled this area in with an additional layer on multiply mode underneath the folds layer that we just added. But yeah, I also wanted to render this area underneath the fabric a bit. So I'm hiding these layers for the time being. The skin tones felt a bit washed out to me. So I just added a bit more pigmentation to it. I had a little bit of trouble with this arm anatomy here. Um, I don't know why, it's actually super simple, but I get stuck here for some odd reason. I think covering half the face with whatever that thing is that she's holding isn't really the best move because half of her face is already covered by the hair. So I don't know what the intention there was. It just makes it hard to tell what's going on on the face with these lines. Even after I painted over it, it was still hard to tell what was going on, where the nose starts and where the lips are, you know? So to finish this off, I just added a gradient in the background and a little shadow on the ground, which just aids the presentation a little bit.
Yo, I'm pausing the video for a few seconds. Are you lacking references for things like figure drawing, game art, illustration, costumes? I know you are. Get 15% off all Graphit Studio reference packs using code SHALA followers 15 at checkout. All right, back to the video. Painted this a few minutes ago if you want to roast this to. Roast this to? To what? What the f does this mean? So this one is a photo study. The author gave me the reference as well to compare. Firstly, it's missing the ambient blue tone in this shadow area, so I'll paint that in as a base first. When it comes to rendering fur, I'd just follow the flow and direction of the fur with my brush strokes. They can be thick strokes at first, because I see that you've kind of tried to paint individual hair strands here, which usually doesn't end up looking good. So we can just paint smaller strokes on top of the big ones later. One trick I used here and the blue area was turning on color jitter. I turned on luminosity randomization per stroke so that some of the strokes would be lighter and some would be darker to basically replicate this section of the reference quickly. I'm using Clip Studio Paint to do this, but this can be done in most painting software as far as I'm aware. To enhance the feeling of depth, I painted some black blobs and just added more brush strokes on top of those to make it seem like there's a shadow underneath Underneath, like in the reference here and yeah, yeah that's basically it I'm now just adding some more micro strokes as I mentioned I would do earlier to finish the image off Buy my shirts right now or else Bruh. Check out my SoundCloud. Hey kid, wanna buy some reference packs? I got you covered, fam.